Luke chapter 5, verse 31. And Jesus, and when Jesus says it, it's important. That settles it. I mean, if man tells me something, okay. But if Jesus says something, okay. And so said unto them, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. And the question is, can I go to a doctor? Can I get medical attention? What did Jesus just say? Yes. <clears throat> and my life has round about me and everything in hospitals, hospital doctors, medical issues, diabetes, surgeries, cancers. And in the realm of Christians, and listen, they, they love you, they care about you. You've been offered all kinds of oils and herbs and and I'm not against the herbs. I'm not against the looking into vitamins and those kind of things and herbs. I believe they work. And but the question comes down to, and I've had Christians tell, oh, you don't, you don't, you don't see a doctor. Let God be your healer. And I have a Christian, you go to a doctor. He's the healer. And then I had people come up to me, well, they're a healer. They'll heal you. So. What Jesus says is just plain and simple. Are you sick? You need a doctor. And he says they that are whole need not a physician. So what about well care checkup? I would say that it would be well advised to go at least once a year to have lab work. Make sure you're not out of whack. Make sure everything, because a cancer you don't want a cancer to be in your body and grow and grow, and by the time it starts showing outward, outwardly symptoms, that may be too late. But that's what Jesus said. So the question is, yes. Now what about healers, plain and simple? Where I live in Daytona Beach, Florida, right behind me is a hospital. You believe in your gifts of healing? You come with me, and there's plenty of rooms behind me. I want to see you heal those people. And I want to see, I want you to visit the doctor's staff and the nursing staff and the cadastral staff, all the offices of that hospital, not just patients. And I want to see you do your healing. Don't give me, they don't have enough faith. Oh, they have faith. They'll let you in your room, in their room. You see, I believe in healing. I don't believe in healers. I believe God is able, if he will, to heal. I believe God can use man to heal. Doctors, nurses, pharmacies. But I don't believe in the gift of healing. They're gone. Paul had left certain people sick. Paul had had certain people die by the end of his ministry. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, that's not. <clears throat> Healers, out the window. Healing, yes. I've had plenty of healing. And i got things on me that needs to be healed. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verse 43. Now, Luke is a medical doctor. And he, he, was, he was around with Paul. And when Timothy reported that he was having stum stomach infirmities, Luke, while Paul was writing to Timothy, he said, you know, have a little wine. That was a prescription in the Bible. Can you find a prescription in the Bible? Yeah, you can find a little wine for your stomach infirmity. You find that there is a prescription of figs, a cluster of figs. I'll leave that for you to find. So Luke 8, 43, And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which has spent all her living on physicians. That's a medical doctor just said that. 
neither could be healed of any. Well, you know, I've been frauded by doctors, and, uh, you know, Luke says, yep, it happened to his time. There was a woman there that she spent everything she had, and it didn't do nothing. Sometimes we're not going to be healed. And the only healing will come will be death. And we may have to spend money and may have to get resources. Healing is not 100% even in the realm of God. There are many Christians that love the Lord, serve the Lord, do right. have got male, medical ailments and they're not going to get rid of listen I am not going to get rid of my diabetes I am not going to get rid of my neuropathy and my pain in my feet unless God comes up and miraculously heal my feet which he can he's able now the question is will he and if he doesn't well I go to the foot doctors, I, I get toes amputated, I, I, I get problems, I get infections into the day I die. But notice verse 8, 844. Came behind him, touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood was thanked. She went to the doctors, then she went to God. We'll find this again in Mark. Chapter 5, verse 26. And has suffered many things of many physicians. It's the woman with the blood 12 years, verse 25. And spent all that she had. And was nothing better, but rather grew worse. That's, that's life. It may happen. And when she, heard that, when she heard of Jesus, came and pressed behind. And then you know she was healed. A lot of your cancers are not going to be healed. A lot of your cancers are going to be healed. Now, we cannot put our faith and trust in doctors alone. We've got to go to God. We've got to trust God. And one more place, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 16. And Asa was 39 years in reign, was diseased in his feet. <laughs> I got disease in my feet. Un until his disease was exceedingly great. I hope it never gets like that. Yet in his disease he sought, not to the Lord, but to physicians. Now Jesus himself said, listen, if you're a whole, you don't need a physician. So, you know, get a checkup. But if you're sick, go to a doctor. That woman with the issue of blood for 12 years was sick. She went to a doctor. And doctors didn't do nothing for her. Then she came to Jesus. Asa was sick. He went to doctors. But he didn't go to the Lord. And when you have a medical issue concern, the very first thing you are to do is go to the Lord in prayer and seek God's guidance and the way of God. Now, don't think like that woman of blood for 12 years. Well, okay, if I go to Jesus, I'm going to be healed like she was healed. No, it may not happen. There were times in Jesus' ministry that he could not do any miracles because of their unbelief. You say, I don't, you don't think I believe? I, you may believe. And there may be, Paul died, didn't he? 
Paul had the infirmity in his flesh that he sought to learn. God says, listen, uh, uh, my mercy, that was it. Sickness and pain is the result of the, the curse of Adam and Eve eating that fruit that they weren't supposed to eat. In the realm of do I go to a doctor, the very first thing is do I go to God first? Seeking God. And after you prayed like that, then, you know, I would call my uh, your your pastor, your church, and upon Christians in, in your church, and I'd say, let's pray for me. I go to God myself, and I go to the pastor, and I go to my, my church brethren, and any other Christians I know, on Facebook, wherever you have. I say, listen, I got this ailment. I'm praying about it. Will you pray with me? If you think you need a doctor... Call your doctor. With, with everybody praying, you're praying. Call your doctor. Now, don't put your faith and trust in the doctor. But look to your doctor as a tool of God. Like a pastor or preacher is with, with the Bible preaching you the word of God. Here's a man or woman that... that, that could be used by God to diagnose your disease, your troubles, or whatever you have wrong. But like a pastor or a preacher, don't elevate the doctor as a God. And then I would do exactly with prayer and, and going to a doctor, I do exactly what they tell you to do. Now, now let me just t give you one instance of myself and someone recently. On what not to do. I have been diagnosed with, can uh, with cancer. I have been diagnosed with di diabetes. I have severe problems with my feet. And when the doctor tells you to change your diet. And you don't style You're going to have troubles and you're going to have problems. You say, did you pray before you went to the doctor? Yes, I prayed while I was in the doctor's office. Oh, how come you weren't healed? Because I didn't listen to what the doctor told me. That's a confession. You got to listen to God. You know, your, your whole family's messed up because you don't read and study the Bible. You don't listen to the preacher preach right correctly. And your whole life is messed up because you didn't listen to the preaching, you didn't listen to your Bible. Your whole medical field is you're messed up, you're unhealthy, and, and you're sickly. Don't blame the doctors when the doctor gives you sound advice and you don't listen to the doctor. Now, I'm not getting into vaccines, I'm not getting... I'm not going there. That's not this study. <coughs> Should I go to a doctor? If you believe in your heart it is serious enough to have a doctor, it's not healing. It's getting worse. There's a lot of pain. It's not improving. It don't look good. I got a, I got a doctor's appointment coming Friday for my foot. I pray to the Lord. I get others involved in prayer. Then I go to the doctor. And if he has you to do tests or he has you go to a, another medical practitioner of, of, of a different practice, I pray over that too. If I'm going to see a doctor, I put a lot of prayer into it. And let me tell you about doctoring and going, yes, I, you can go to a doctor. It is not anti-Bible to not go to a doctor. Asaph didn't go to a doctor. Asaph went to doctors. He didn't go to the Lord. He got himself in trouble. That woman with the disease, 12 years, she went to doctors, got herself in trouble. Then she came to Jesus and she got healed. 
Jesus himself said, hey, listen, if you're sick, go to a doctor. A medical doctor, Luke record, records in the Bible that men spend all they spend on doctoring. There's a there's a case in the Bible, I'll leave it up to you, that a case for a boil. The prescription was a lump of figs. There was a man that, that had, had problems with his stomach, and a medical doctor told Paul, tell him a little wine. And yet, in the ministry of the same Apostle Paul, people, at the close of his ministry, people got sick, and people died. Unless the rapture happens, the Lord tarries. There are going to be Christians who are going to get sick, they're going to get ailed. They're going to have a heart attack. They're going to have diabetes. Uh, they're, they're going to get stroke. Whatever it could be. And they may die from those medical ailments. And to put it like this. I'll say two more aspects. If you're having a heart attack, don't come. Oh, I can't go see a doctor. No, you, you better call 911. Even if you're having the symptoms of a heart attack. And your religion doesn't allow blood transfusions. That's just absolutely foolish. I'll tell you, I'll tell you okay, well, are they safe? I've had blood transfusions, and I had a, a wife had blood transfusions. And the very first blood transfusion I ever had, and I asked ever since then, the very first blood transfusion I had to sign for. My wife was was unconscious and all that. And they asked me, you know, religious preference. I said, no. I said, just, uh, uh, let me ask you one thing. Can you double check the blood for any diseases? That's my main concern. And to be frank, I'm, I'm concerned about sexual translated diseases. Can you just double check that blood if pop because it was a serious event. And when they come when they came to me, you know, I signed the paperwork for blood transfusion. Yeah, I, the Bible says, hey, you need a doctor. I just ask you one thing, if you would please double check the blood just for any diseases. Make sure. That's all you have to do. And absolute merge the other that they'll do it. So yes, you can go to a doctor. A doctor can heal through the power of God. God can heal without a doctor. Now, are there healers with the gift of healing? No. Nope. And if you got a friend who thinks he's got that gift of healing, tell him get in the car. Stop off at a little gas station, get a, get some soda or, or a cup of coffee and a donut, whatever it is. And then drive them to the nearest hospital. And walk them into the hospital, go up to the information or the check-in booth. Say, i got a healer here. Right? You, you believe in the gift of healing? You believe in that? All right, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the staff of the hospital. And we're going to go through every patient room. And every pay, everyone that's in this hospital today, this man's going to go up and he's going to heal them. That people will walk out of the hospital today healed. And you watch that guy back down. You watch that guy whimper. You, if that guy was a turtle, he would get in his shell. I know. I I have a charismatic friend that doesn't bother with me anymore. When I kept telling him that. And this man that told me he had the gift of healing is married to a woman with many, many medical ailments. Standing in front of my wife at that time that had many, many medical ailments. Standing in front of me that has a lot of medical ailments. I still do. His wife still does. And my wife died of cancer. Go to the doctor, but but before you go to the doctor, go to prayer. Get others to, if, if you really think it's serious, 
Get others involved in prayer. And then go to the doctor with a with bunch of prayer. Now listen, you gotta go to the emergency room. Pray while you're on the way to the emergency room. Don't sit there, uh, you know, wait it out and no, no, don't do that. Prayer time in the going to emergency room if it's that serious is on the way to the emergency room, whether you are in your car or someone else's car or an ambulance. At that point, you pray as you go. Okay? If you need medical attention and you need it right away, get it. The phone number is 911. Pray while the ambulance comes. Pray while the police come. Pray as you from your house to the medical facility. Yes. Jesus said, if you have an ailment, if you're sick, you can see a doctor. 